Comisco Electric here. Today is Sunday, August 24th, 2025, and this is The Current, your weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. Nissan has announced pricing for its third generation LEAF, which stands for Leading Environmentally Friendly Affordable Family Car. The 2026 model is staying true to its name with a starting price of $29,990 for the S Plus trim, while still offering 303 miles of range. The SV Plus and Platinum Plus trims are priced at $34,230 and $38,990 respectively. A base S model featuring a smaller 52 kilowatt hour battery is expected to be even more affordable when it becomes available at an undefined later date. Nissan listed pricing for some optional factory installed equipment and accessories, including the available battery heater on the SV Plus and Platinum Plus trims at $300. That option will help owners in cold environments achieve better charging performance. While the NAX port is standard for fast charging, a CCS adapter is priced at $170. The new LEAF will arrive at dealerships sometime this fall. These prices are excluding the federal EV tax credit, which is set to expire at the end of September. Notably, some clarification has been provided by the IRS, which has confirmed the credit can be claimed after the September 30th end date, as long as a buyer has a written binding contract to purchase or lease the EV prior to that date and some payment has changed hands. A non-refundable deposit, down payment, or vehicle trade-in qualifies as a form of payment in this case. This is similar to the practice followed when the first EV tax credit was sunset back in 2022 before the Inflation Reduction Act established the new policy. I'll link information to the recently published FAQ regarding the expiration of the EV tax credits in the description below if you want to learn more. We may start seeing some automakers implement down payment options in order to take advantage of the program before it ends in just a month. Tesla and Chevrolet are among the brands with plans to launch affordable models this fall and will update you if they offer a practical path to extending credit availability beyond September 30th. Weeks ago, I had a chance to see the new Leaf in person and the quality was very impressive for the price point. In the coming weeks, I will be spending some time on road with the 2026 Leaf, so if you have specific questions about it, please put them in the comments below. This week, Nissan has also revealed they will be partnering with US-based LiCap Technologies to develop advanced dry electrode production technology for their fully solid-state batteries. The partnership leverages LiCap's proprietary activated dry electrode technology, which eliminates the need for energy-intensive drying and solvent recovery, reducing costs and environmental impact. Back in January, Nissan had begun operating its all-solid-state battery pilot line at the Yokohama plant in Japan. The automaker plans to integrate this technology into high-performance, cost-effective batteries, powering a variety of EVs before the end of 2028. All solid-state batteries have the potential for energy density approximately twice that of conventional lithium-ion batteries, significantly shorter charging time due to superior charge and discharge performance, and lower costs due to less expensive materials. Nissan believes all solid-state batteries can be reduced to $75 per kilowatt hour when they launch in 2028 and to $65 per kilowatt hour thereafter, which they will say would place EVs at the same cost level as gas gasoline-powered vehicles. Current pricing for lithium-ion batteries for EVs is about $115 per kilowatt hour. Speaking of battery production, Blue Oval SK, the joint venture between Ford Motor Company and South Korean battery maker SK On, celebrated a major milestone with the delivery of its first battery cell from its Kentucky One plant in Glendale. The facility, part of a $5.8 billion investment, began commercial production to supply batteries for Ford's F-150 Lightning and E-Transit electric vehicles with potential future supply to third-party customers. The Blue Oval SK Battery Park broke ground on December 5, 2022, marking the start of construction for the 1,500-acre campus housing two battery plants. The Kentucky One plant that is producing NMC, or nickel manganese cobalt chemistry, has an annual production capacity of 37 gigawatt hours, while the second plant, Kentucky Two, is planned to produce 45 gigawatt hours once fully operational, bringing the total capacity to 82 gigawatt hours annually. 
The Wall Street Journal had previously reported on rumors that the joint venture would supply Nissan with batteries, but no confirmation of this has been made by either party. Ford sold just under 100,000 EVs in America in 2024, but the capacity from these plants could supply more than 10 times that, or over 1 million EVs annually. As we reported last week, the company will debut their next-generation EV on their universal EV platform in the form of a mid-size pickup in 2027. Could there be opportunities for this cell production to supply e-mobility sectors like EV tolls or electric motorbikes? Or do you think other automakers will buy all of the output? In related news, the U.S. Department of Energy unveiled plans to invest nearly $1 billion funding domestic critical mineral production, processing, and manufacturing. The initiative aims to reduce U.S. reliance on foreign suppliers, particularly China, for materials essential to clean energy, national defense, and advanced technologies like electric vehicle batteries and semiconductors. The funding includes up to $500 million for battery materials processing and recycling, $250 million for byproduct recovery from industrial facilities, $135 million for a rare earth elements demonstration facility, and $50 million for advancing technologies in rare earth magnet and semiconductor material production. An additional $40 million will support recovering critical minerals from industrial wastewater. These efforts target minerals like lithium, nickel, cobalt, and rare earth elements essential for energy and defense applications. The DOE's funding opportunities set to roll out in late 2025 and 2026 will prioritize projects with strong commercialization potential and domestic supply chain integration requiring at least 50% cost sharing from recipients. This new DOE funding is separate from Inflation Reduction Act incentives that have been adjusted to phase out early by the big beautiful bill. The IRA programs will end by 2031, and this new DOE funding differs by focusing on direct financial support in the form of grants rather than tax-based mechanisms. Another difference is that this new DOE program also covers semiconductors. Notably, this week the federal government announced they've acquired 10% of Intel, one of America's largest chip companies. This is also separate from tens of millions of dollars of previous DOE funding programs established last year. Those are paused and currently under review by the department. Hyundai Motor Company and their subsidiary, Kia, have joined forces with South Korea's leading battery manufacturers, LG Energy Solutions, Samsung SDI, and SK On to enhance electric vehicle battery safety technologies. The collaboration announced this week at Hyundai and Kia's R&D Center in South Korea follows a year-long effort sparked by a 2024 EV battery fire incident that raised public safety concerns. The partnership focuses on five key areas. Safety-related patents, Digital Battery Passports, which is a European Union-led initiative to digitize all battery lifecycle information from production to disposal and recycling, design and manufacturing quality, and advanced firefighting technology. A memorandum of understanding was signed to extend this cooperation, aiming to set global EV safety standards while staying competitive with leading foreign battery manufacturers. The Hyundai Kia R&D chief emphasized the commitment to deliver safer EVs, while LG Energy Solutions CEO and Samsung SDI CEO hailed the initiative as a step toward industry leadership and sustainability. SK Ons CEO noted the collaboration would elevate battery safety to new heights. We have seen some impressive battery safety tests from Chinese battery manufacturers like CATL with puncture and stress testing resulting in zero thermal reactions in their latest chemistries. Even though EV battery fires are significantly less likely than internal combustion engine fires, the more we can reduce concerns of battery safety, the more reasons people will decide to go electric. Canada's Bombardier produces electric motorcycles, side-by-sides, snowmobiles, and has even revealed e-foils and jet skis, which will hit the market next year. This week, their power sports brand, Can-Am, introduced the 2026 Outlander Electric, which they are calling the industry's first mass-produced fully electric all-terrain vehicle. 
The Outlander Electric features BRP's Rotax e-power drivetrain, delivering a peak of 47 horsepower and 53 pound-feet of torque. This system allows the new EATV to surpass the towing capacity of Can-Am's top gasoline-powered ATVs, pulling an impressive 1,830 pounds. The 8.9 kilowatt-hour lithium-ion battery offers up to 50 miles of range and charges from 20% to 80% in just 50 minutes using a J1772 connector for 6.6 .6 kilowatt level 2 charging. Starting at $12,999, the Outlander Electric features low-noise XPS Recon Force tires designed for silent operation, a liquid-cooled system, and an optimized suspension for near-zero vibration. The ATV includes a two-wheel drive slash four-wheel drive Rotax transmission with an auto-locking front differential, 12-inch ground clearance, selectable ride modes including normal, sport, and work modes, a top speed of 50 miles per hour, adjustable regenerative braking settings, and a modern 5-inch display with LED lighting. The entry-level option is designed for solo riders, but the Electric Max option has a larger chassis which can accommodate a passenger. Can-Am's electric ATVs have a 5-year battery warranty too. Considering the operational cost advantages and lower maintenance, do you think Can-Am has priced the Outlander Electric well? If I could get some time with a review unit, would you be interested in that coverage? Speaking of coverage, we've been busy over here. This past week, we published three new videos on the MISCO Electric network of channels. The first is a very in-depth look at the manufacturing process of the Lightship AE-1 luxury electric travel trailer filmed on location at the company's factory near Denver, Colorado. Co-founder Ben Parker answered all of our questions, and we think you'll love this video over at the MISCO Electric industry channel. On this channel, we published an extended demonstration towing the AE-1 and using their Trek Drive self-propelling technology on public roads. Those in the market for an RV might like to compare this footage with our previous coverage on road towing the Pebble Flow electric travel trailer last year and the full grounded G3 electric motorhome review we published a couple of weeks ago. All of those links will be in this video's description. Finally, we were totally thrilled to publish an absurdly detailed review of the radical new Aventon Adventure M. This mid-drive smart fat tire e-bike is priced under $3,000 and is the first Aventon to use an electronic auto shifting transmission and automatic power outputs. I went over all the features and put it to the test on both some single track mountain biking trails and pavement. I was blown away. That link is in the video's description too. These have been our top EV news stories for this week. If you found value in our coverage, we ask that you subscribe and share this video online. If you'd like to keep the current independent and keep it coming weekly, there's a thanks button below where you can make a contribution, large or small. We appreciate your support. Thank you for watching and until next time, drive, fly, ride, go electric.